Hi friends, my name is Jess. Welcome to Books Past Bedtime. So today we are doing another installment in my little series that I've got going on here where I read my friends' favorite books. And featured today is my lovely friend Amanda over at Ginger Snapped Reads. Amanda and I have become super close recently and I really wanted to give her favorite books a try. She definitely is a big romance reader, which I have like dipped my toe in last year, but I haven't really fully submerged myself into the genre. And so I feel like this video is going to help me do so. Four out of the five books that I'm going to read in this video are romance heavy. I really can't wait to dive in and see what I think. We're gonna do a little bit of taboo, a little bit of slow burn, a little bit of fantasy romance. I'm gonna get the full gamut and we are gonna see if my tastes align with Amanda's. So I am just gonna jump right into my TBR really quick and let you know what I'm going to be reading. Um, the first book I'm going to be reading is The Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is probably the most different of all of the rest of the books in this list, but this is a historical fiction story and it is told from the point of view of Aphrodite actually, which is really cool. It's a World War I, World War II story about these four characters and I think their lives and then falling in love and that kind of thing. I've heard this is really beautiful. I've heard the audiobook is excellent and I did get that from the library so I might be picking that up as well. This is a chunker but it's got like not very many words on a page so I don't think it will take that long to get through and this is honestly a beautiful book. It also looks like there's perspectives from Hades which I'm into so I think I'm really gonna like this one and I can't wait. As far as predictions go, I think that this one might be my favorite out of all of them just because this is more um, my speed. It was something that was already on my radar, already something that I wanted to pick up. So I think that out of any of them, I'm most likely to give this one five stars, but we will just have to wait and see. The next book on this list that is also kind of my speed, something that I probably would have picked up on my own is The Grace Year by Kim Leggett. As far as I can tell, I think this is like a YA handmaiden's tale. Like I think that this is like a YA dystopian story and in this story women are very much lesser than and only valued for their reproductive abilities. In this town women are told that they have a magic and so on their 16th birthdays they are sent to experience what's called the grace year where they like live out in the woods for a year and have to survive and I think they probably end up like killing one another and all this stuff. I don't really know exactly but I think it's basically following our main character who very much doesn't trust the world that she's in, doesn't understand why she's treated the way she is, doesn't like the way that she's treated, really wants to make her own way in the world, live her own life. She is forced into the forest with all the rest of them and has to learn how to survive. And I actually have heard kind of mixed things about this one, but it does have a 4.14 average rating on Goodreads with almost 30,000 ratings. So that's honestly pretty good. I have actually started this one. I'm like 25% of the way through and so far I'm really enjoying it. So I have high hopes for this one. The next book I'm going to be reading is From Lukov with Love by Marina Zapata. In this story, we're following our main character, Jasmine, who is a figure skater her window of opportunity to break into the professional world is closing and when she's presented with an opportunity she goes and takes it even if it means putting her trust in somebody that she has spent the last 17 years hating. So I think that this is an enemy to lover story. Um, Amanda told me that it's very slow burn and that it doesn't get really good until the very end but I trust her that this book is worth it and so I'm excited to pick this one up. Um, I do like books about figure skating, gymnastics, um, all those kinds of sports so I think I will like that aspect of this book and I'm really looking forward to it and I think it will be a fun winter read too so perfect. Now come the two that she had me swear up and down that I would read and the first of which is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is an adult fantasy romance I believe so I'm not really quite sure what this one is about but we are following our main character Poppy who is a maiden and maidens are supposed to be like very pure and they um, are granted either like forgiveness they're found worthy by the gods or they're condemned as far as I know um, in the ceremony called the Ascension. All is well and good until Poppy meets this boy named Hawk who is one of the guards that's supposed to ensure her ascension and I think they might have a romance. I don't really know. I've heard that this book is steamy. I actually bought this one back in the day so I do have this one on Kindle so I was interested in reading it. It was on my radar so I'm glad this is finally pushing me to do so and I really hope I love it because Amanda really loves this one. Now the other one that she made me swear to read was Credence by Penelope Douglas. I'm very scared of this one. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I read a Penelope Douglas last year called Punk 57 for my reading Chandler and Lee's favorite books video. I liked it already there's some weird dub con stuff in it that I wasn't a huge fan of but overall I liked it pretty well so I'm interested in this one but I'm also scared because I think that this one's a little bit more taboo and pushes the envelope a little bit farther than Punk 57 does. In the story we're basically following our main character Tiernan I think is her name. Um, her parents die and so she is entrusted to the guardianship of her father's stepbrother. Her father's stepbrother has two sons. She goes to live with them out in the wilderness and they teach her how to survive out there and I think she she 
has sex with all of them <laughs> or something. I'm not really sure. I know that this is like a reverse harem, which is a word that I recently learned. I'm a little scared, not gonna lie. Why did I sound like Hailey? I need to stop. So those are the five books that I am going to be reading for this reading vlog. Hi, so I've started my first book. I just wanted to pop on here and give you a quick update. So I am 50% of the way into The Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is a historical fiction, fantasy kind of book. Um, and I say it's fantasy because it's told through the point of view of the Greek gods. So we are following a conversation between Hephaestus, Aphrodite, and Ares. Aphrodite is telling them a story of great love. We are following right now a timeline, I believe in World War One. Our main characters are British and, and the guy James, he has enlisted to go to the war, but right before he leaves, he meets our main character whose name has slipped my mind at the moment and they just really have an instant connection. The war brought them together but it's also tearing them apart and keeping them separate. He goes away to the front as an effort to kind of be closer to them. She takes this volunteer position in France um, as somebody who comforts and entertains the soldiers. She is a piano player and when she's there she meets some new friends. Aubrey and Colette are some other side characters that have their own romance which is really sweet and pure and I'm just rooting for them a lot. So overall I am really enjoying this one so far. I'm listening to the audio, which is definitely the way to go. This is one of the best audiobooks I've listened to. It has one of my favorite audiobook narrators in it, Fiona Hardingham. She also narrated the Ember and the Ashes series, the Anti Darken series by Kristen White. She has also narrated, I think, the Girl Online series by Zoe Suck, which yes, I have read and completed, but we're not going to talk about that right now. But yeah, I'm really, really liking The Lovely War. It doesn't feel like a five star read to me at this moment, but it could very well be. I haven't read a historical fiction in a long time, and I'm really enjoying it. It definitely is romance focused or more so just character focused, which is a good thing. I do enjoy that. It's not felt boring at all to me and I really like that it's told through the lens of the Greek gods. I feel like that gives that a really extra interesting element. So overall, I'm really enjoying this one. I can't wait to finish it and I will give you some more in-depth thoughts once I do. Hello, hello. I have an update for you. I did finish The Lovely War by Julie Berry and I really, really liked this one a lot. So I think I'm going to give it like 4.25 stars or like 4 point five stars. I really really did enjoy it. I think my favorite part about the story was that it just felt really rich. It was a very like rich and layered well done story. The characters felt really real and well rounded. The plot was interesting. I really loved how it was layered in the two different perspectives. One from the perspective of the Greek gods telling this love story and then the second perspective of like actually in the love story you know. So I really liked that like meta storytelling method. I thought it was really cool really well done and just like worked very well for me. I I really loved all of the characters in the love story as well. Um, Hazel and James are such a vibrant, lively, like fun couple to read about and also just like really beautiful and tragic. There's something that happens to Hazel towards the end that really just makes me feel for her. It made me cry. It was very emotional. There's geese outside my window and they're like literally fighting. They're pecking each other. Anyway, what happened to Hazel just really broke my heart and the way James was there for her during it just also broke my heart. I just really liked them a lot. I also absolutely loved loved Colette and Aubrey who is the other couple that's like friends with um James and Hazel that we also follow their love story. <sighs> that one broke my heart as well. I loved them together. They were so good together. I almost liked Colette and Aubrey better than I liked Hazel and James but um I liked both couples. I also really liked the focus on Hazel and Colette's friendship. It wasn't just about the romance. It was also about their friendship, them supporting each other, them being there for each other which was just really really beautiful and I really enjoyed their connection and reading about it. They were just lovely. Also although the gods are like telling the story. They're not a huge focus of the book, but of what we did get, I really liked them. I really have always loved Aphrodite and Hephaestus together. I think Hephaestus is just like a very misunderstood character. I've always, he's always been one of my favorite Greek gods and obviously Aphrodite is like incredible and I just have always kind of liked them together as like a little odd pair and this book really talked about like her cheating on him with Ares and like that kind of stuff um, which happens in the legends and the tales but I liked their little resolution at the end. It made me really happy. I've always liked that pairing so it was cool like seeing them focused on because I'm not focused on a lot in a lot of stories. So also the audiobook of this is excellent. I would really recommend consuming this via audio. There is like original music scores in the audiobook as Hazel and Aubrey are both piano players. The inclusion of that music just really made it a very beautiful audiobook and also it's full cast. There is characters for everybody. I talked about this a little bit in the earlier clip but I just wanted to stress again that the audiobook is really the way to go for this one. So I really enjoyed this one a lot. It was a success. I'm glad I chose to read this one first.
So I have started my second book and that is The Grace Year by Kim Liggett. This is a YA dystopian read. It's very like Handmaid's Tale-esque. It's set in a world where women are seen as lesser than they're really only valued for their ability to marry and have children. But then there's also this weird thing that happens before everybody's coming of age, before they all get married, they get sent on this grace year, which is all of the girls have to go out in the forest and live and survive for a year. And this is to like get rid of their magic because women in this world are magic. We're not really sure if magic is real yet or not, or if it's just kind of like how they thought magic existed in Salem, Massachusetts. So we are following our main character as she goes on her grace year. Our main character definitely is kind of like not like the other girls. Like she can fend for herself and she has like some street smarts and stuff, but this gets her in trouble, thrown out of the camp. The other girls don't really like her very much. There's just some crazy shit happening as like some of the girls think that they are doing magic and some of the girls are like causing mutiny. There's like a tyrannical leader girl. There's a lot of stuff happening. I am really liking this one so far. I wasn't sure of going into this one how I would feel. It was probably the one that I, I don't know if I, it was the one I thought I would least likely to like, but I am liking it a little bit more than I expected to. It's a really fast, quick read. I like the feminist aspects. I do like the main character. I'm sure some people kind of think she's probably a pick-me character, and she is in a way, but it doesn't bother me that much. Um, I'm also interested to see like any romance elements come into play because she has this childhood friend that asked her to marry him that's going on and then there's also some like guard guy that she has a friendship with which I think is more likely for a romance but I feel like having a romance would also kind of like defeat the purpose of this book because it's like about feminism and your worth as a woman being more than your ability to marry and have children but I don't know I'm not really sure where it's going to go but I am liking it so far don't think that it's going to be a five star but I don't think it's impossible that it would be a five star you know if I had to rate it right now I probably would give it like a three and a half maybe a four so yeah, those are my feelings and I will go more in depth on my thoughts once I finish the book. I finished The Grace Year by Kim Liggett and I have mixed thoughts on this one. So in the last clip I talked about how I was enjoying it and overall I enjoyed it but I did have some issues with it. So this book is very often compared to The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I personally wasn't a huge fan of The Handmaid's Tale. Obviously the message is very important and very timely. I don't even really remember exactly what I didn't like about it. It felt it was just a little bit too heavy-handed for me and I would say the same about this book and this book was heavy-handed in that it kept telling us that women were mistreated in this world that girls didn't have the same opportunities we were told that our main character tyranny was like just such a champion for women's rights and all this stuff but then I feel like her actions didn't really show that as much as I would have liked them to especially towards the end in the second half of the book um in the second half of the book there just appears this random romance as they're out in the woods on their grace here which is fine but I think I would have liked it more if it was developed a little bit better because it was like she had been injured out in the woods and somebody took her in and she thought he was like gonna kill her and sacrifice her and whatever that they do to the women out in the woods but it turned out he was actually nursing her back to health but like it was like one page she thought he was gonna kill her and then the very next page she's in love with him and that jump was just a little bit much for me I was like wait what just happened I'm confused it didn't happen that quick but it felt like it happened that quick because there was no build up to it it was like she was lying prone sick on this <laughs> in this guy's house and then she was in love with him the next day it was just a little bit jarring um especially when she very much didn't want to be in love didn't want to get married all that stuff which like a lot of people have criticized that specifically that she would fall in love with somebody but I think the point of tyranny was that women should be able to choose you know like it's not women should never get married and just be without like be independent blah 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 like I think that's very different than champion championing can't say that word than championing women's rights to choose their the path of their life like I think that was the point more so than I hate men and never want to get married you know what I mean and I think that's what like true feminism is is giving women the ability to choose their own path in life and what they want to do you know does that make sense <laughs> so it wasn't that that bothered me it was just the lack of development in the romance you know to me the ending was also just a little bit weird but I liked it more than I thought I was going to spoilers for the ending just so you know so after her grace year she comes back from the camp and she's pregnant with this man's baby that she met in the woods this man is now dead so she's like goes initially back and is planning to be like this is what happens in the grace year it's a bad thing we shouldn't be sending women out to do this anymore and she was like very prepared to be banished then she realizes she's pregnant and when she gets back everybody sees that she's pregnant so she can't really speak up anymore because she's got to think about the child as well and she goes and 
is married to her childhood best friend. Like, he's a fine, good person, I guess. He protects her and all that. So she's like kind of happy enough to be with him. But I think her main focus is the child. And I did really like the ending where she was like praying for a girl and like this girl's going to be the change. Like, I did like that part more than I thought I was going to. But also like, what a shitty world to bring a girl into. <laughs> I digress. So, done with spoilers. I just feel conflicted about it because there were aspects that I really liked and aspects that I didn't. I really wish that we explored the character of Kirsten more because Kirsten was my favorite character. I thought she was so interesting. She had to have been so traumatized and hurt. And then at the end where it's like she just is walking around blank. It's the only way she can deal with everything. She was obviously queer in some capacity as we learned from Gertie. Being queer in that world is just like not a not a thing and so to repress all of that and like to worry about getting your life situated and not being banished and all of that stuff she had to have been just like so stressed and terrified she lashed out and i just think characters like that are so interesting and i wish we had spent more time with her i really thought she was a really cool character so yeah there were things that i liked about it i liked tyranny as a character she definitely was a messy character i think what she stood for ultimately was championing women's right to choose especially in the end where we kind of see how create this like little vigilante group to cause like incremental change. I think that was super interesting and I could see how she is working to create a better world, just not in the extreme way that she thought she was going to. I think overall I didn't hate her character as much as some people do. One thing I also thought was weird that I forgot to mention was she has this friend named Hans and he's like a guard. He's great. Like he was my favorite character for the whole thing and then we find out that he's evil and I was just like, what? <laughs> Why? I just thought it was so weird. I kind of thought maybe she would fall in love with him but that was an inaccurate prediction. I didn't like that either. I was like, Hans, you're my boy. Like what? What is going on? <laughs> anyway, so overall I liked parts. I didn't like parts and so I think I'm gonna give it like a two and a half star. I definitely didn't think it was bad at all but it just wasn't my favorite thing. Although I think that if I had read it in high school, I would have absolutely loved it, but it's just not my thing anymore, if that makes sense. So I'm really sorry I didn't love this one, Manda, but I hope that you understand where I'm coming from and I didn't hurt you too much. I'm sorry. Okay, the next book I'm going to read is Credence. I have started it. I'm like 40 pages into it. Um, I'm very scared. I'm very scared right now. <laughs> this one, out of all of them, terrifies me the most. So, um, pray for me. So... I just got 50% of the way through Credence and I have thoughts. I just finished chapter 16. I kind of wish I did a 25% update because I was feeling very differently at the 25% mark than I am right now. So just as a refresher from the intro, this is a taboo romance. It follows our girl Tiernan and her parents die in the beginning of this book and she really doesn't have any family. So um, she's like 17, about to turn 18 in a couple months. And in that time period, her father's stepbrother gets technical custody of her for like the last couple months before she turns 18. And so she goes to live with him and his sons up in this secluded cabin in Colorado and then <laughs> I think it's like the technical term is a reverse harem. Yeah. <laughs> So, I was very nervous going into this book. I don't read a lot of taboo romance, especially not taboo straight romance. It just, I don't know. The straights freak me out, to be honest with you. But that aside, I really was not liking this book from like the beginning to the 40% mark. The writing was fine. I really liked the descriptions of the mountains and where they were and everything. And I liked the plot all right with Tiernan and her parents, but it was quite repetitive in that they just kept having scenes where she was working through her issues with her parents um, because they were like famous and never really loved her, gave her the time of day. Those scenes just kind of kept happening over and over again and we really weren't getting a lot. And then we just like kind of jumped straight into the sexual tension between her and her like step uncle and step cousins. <laughs> and it's like, wow, okay, um, there's no build up here. We're just into it. That's okay. Sure, we're doing it. And also there's this really icky scene with one of the guys, Caleb, who's one of the cousins, one of the sons. He just like comes out of nowhere and starts assaulting her. He's never even met her. Um, she tells him to stop like 50 times and he does not until the other, until his brother Noah comes in and like pulls him off and her and he's like what are you doing and I did not like that and I'm not looking forward to those actions being excused. They're kind of like, well, he didn't know that it was her. He didn't know who she was. He thought she was just some random girl from town. And it's like, well, even if 
she wasn't living there and wasn't technically part of their family, um, the fact that he would treat anybody like that is gross. So I was not a fan of that scene at all and it made me feel really icky honestly and it really made me mad. After I read that I was like maybe I should be enough this book but I was like no I'm going to persevere for Amanda's sake because this really is one of Amanda's favorite books so I'm like there's got to be something redeeming in it I'm going to keep going. I don't want to get too into it but I do want to say that like I think people should be able to read pretty much whatever they want as long as they understand the difference between fiction and reality. I don't think it's wrong if you don't have a problem reading about things like that. I just personally have a problem reading things like that. So I didn't like that scene and was not a fan. But I kept going and I started to like some of the characters more. My favorite boy right now is definitely Noah. Um, he seems the most normal. He is got weird sexual tension going on with Tiernan as well, but he's like nice to her. <laughs> Whereas like her step-uncle Jake and Caleb are just like really mean and aggressive with her, which I just I don't like that either. It's just not something I prefer <laughs> in my romances. Like now that I'm at the 50% mark, she is starting to build more of a relationship with all three of them. And I am starting to like all three of them more than I did in the beginning. And they've kind of like started to understand each other a little bit more and it's become more of like a equal sort of relationship. And I just read chapter 16, which is the first like really steamy scene. And it was definitely really steamy. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot to process, especially the bit at the end. Um, I, I don't know, but I definitely am liking it more than I was liking it in the beginning. So I am going to try and finish it tonight because I'm very behind on this video and need to get another book finished. And it says I have like three and a half hours left in the ebook on my Kindle. So, but I think it might go faster in the second half, especially because I'm more into it now. I really have no idea how I would rate this right now if I was like had to rate it. I definitely do not foresee it taking the top spot from Lovely War just because of the issues I've had with it. I definitely don't think that after that particular scene with Caleb I could rate this five stars. I just even if I really love the ending or something I can't justify ever giving it that high of a rating but it's not the DNF that I thought it was originally so I'm going to withhold my rating thoughts for now but that's where we're at right now. So yeah that's my update and I will talk to you again when I have something to update you on. <laughs> I finished Credence a couple days ago. I'm conflicted about this one too. So hear me out. Like for me, rating this as like smut, <laughs> great. It's really good. But the actual story of it wasn't really for me, you know? I definitely understand the appeal. It just didn't fit my personal preferences. <laughs> this is so hard to talk about, but all right, let's just rewind. In the first clip, I talked about the three different guys that our main character is with throughout the story. My favorite was Noah up until the very end. Just liked him a lot. He kind of has nice guy syndrome a little bit, but in this book, when the other two characters were borderline abusive, I was here for the nice guy because he was the least of my worries <laughs> in this book. And I kind of felt bad for him a little bit because I think he did genuinely really like her. And he was pretty like surprisingly cool about the whole thing. So Noah was my boy. I, I was kind of let down by the ending a little bit. This is going to be a spoiler clip. So if you hadn't read Credence and you want to, maybe don't watch this one and skip to the next book. But I'm just going to talk about it because there's no way to talk about it without spoilers. I was kind of upset about the ending. Caleb was probably my least favorite of them. I really wanted to like him because he is like my perfect kind of hero in a story. Like I really like the tortured like bad boy that really has like soft and sweet with the girl or his love interest or whoever. I do really like that trope so I think that if the assault scene at the beginning hadn't happened I really would have liked Caleb and I would have been very happy with the ending but because that happened I just really could not get on board. I just kept thinking about it. It literally was never addressed for the main character giving excuses for it and about why it happened like and like secretly kind of thinking it was hot. Like wish fulfillment and fantasies are fine. I'm not judging anybody for that. I can understand why people liked Caleb but just just for me personally, I just couldn't get over it and it's just something that I don't like. And I really have found reading a couple of these that I don't like blade romances at all. Like I don't mind an enemies to lovers where they're like playfully mean to each other, but I don't like physical violence against each other or like just being so verbally aggressive and just like degrading people. Like I don't, it's not my thing. I'm not into it. Just the way that Caleb was hot and cold. Like sometimes he would be really sweet with her and I'd be like, wow, that's awesome. Like I like that. I like that a lot. But then he would just be like, 
snap for no reason and be physically and verbally aggressive towards her and it's just too far for me i just can't vibe with it i'm a grudge holder so when you do that once i can't forget it <laughs> I just didn't really vibe with Caleb. The dad wasn't really in the second half as much. Like he kind of just really took a back a back seat, which was fine because I thought that whole relationship was kind of weird. I also thought it was kind of weird that he ended up hooking up with her like nanny in the end. Like <laughs> the fact that the nanny was like, she wasn't cool with it. But then obviously she eventually was fine with it because she started hooking up with him strange. I don't know. So there were definitely parts that I liked. I definitely thought it was an interesting story. I kept reading the entire time. Obviously, I liked the smut. Like, I thought it was good. If I was just purely reading this for the smut, fantastic. Great. Excellent. But the story for me just didn't totally work. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I don't think this book was bad by any means. I really 100% see why people like it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Like, even though despite my personal problems, it's I don't think it's like a problematic book because it is what it is. But for me personally, it didn't really work that much so I think I'm gonna give this three stars which isn't terrible but it's not as much as I wanted to like it either I feel very similarly about this one that I did about Penelope Douglas's other book that I read Punk 57 I might have liked Punk 57 just a little bit more because I don't think it was quite as bad like there was definitely some dubious consent issues in Punk 57 but in Credence there were some blatant <laughs> consent issues so I don't know I don't know I don't know. I'm sorry, Amanda. I just didn't like it very much. I'm sorry. Don't, don't hate me. I love you. <laughs> okay, so that's Credence. Next, we're going to talk about From Luke Off With Love. Hi, welcome to my car. I am currently halfway through From Luke Off With Love by Marina Zapata, and I'm really enjoying this one. Just as a refresher, this one is like an enemies to lovers ice skating romance. Our main character is really trying to be a professional ice skater, but she's not had the best luck in her career, and she's always had this rivalry with this guy who also goes to her skating company rink thing. He that approaches her this season and actually asks her to be his partner for um, partner skating, and she's like, what the heck? She thinks it's a trick at first, but she finally agrees because it's like her best chance and her last shot to actually medal as an ice skater and all that good stuff so um she gives it a shot they obviously bicker a lot and just like aren't the best most compatible people but then as they spend more time together they start to form a friendship and I think later on down the road there's going to be more romance and I really am liking this one a lot I really love the ice skating aspect like I think it's so fun I did gymnastics and cheerleading as kids so like I like anything in that kind of a realm and ice skating is definitely like an extension of dance gymnastics etc so I really like that I've always liked watching watching figure skating in the Olympics and all that good stuff. So I really like figure skating atmosphere and the competition aspect of it's very similar to the competition aspect of like gymnastics and that kind of thing. So I'm familiar with that. I really enjoy reading about that and the athleticisms of our characters, that kind of thing. Um, I also just really like our characters in general. Our main character has this really big family that's really fun to learn about and her relationship with Ivan is very interesting. I love their banter. Like they're just so funny. And I also like now that they're becoming to become closer friends. It's really like showing a softer side to both of them and she's started to open up to him a little bit more so uh this is definitely a slow burn romance like there's been really no romance at all so far which I'm okay with I really like developing the friendships and hopefully there'll be some like pining later because I'm really into mutual pining so <laughs> I kind of think that might be the direction that this book goes in but I'm really enjoying it listening to the audio I really like the audio it has um, a narrator for each of our main characters and overall it's just a really enjoyable story like I keep thinking about it keep wanting to read it so I'm very excited to finish it and hopefully we'll do so today or tomorrow and I will update you and let you know my final thoughts right now. I might be enjoying this one more than The Lovely War. I'm not sure. I think I like those two pretty much the same right now. This one is a little bit more of like a light fun read than Lovely War so I like it kind of better in that aspect just because it's a fun read but I do think I probably will rate this one pretty highly unless something weird happens because I'm really really enjoying it so I think it'll be like in the four star sort of range but yeah I'll let you know my final thoughts when I finish it. All right we're coming back on a positive note with this one because I absolutely love From Luke Off With Love. I thought it was so freaking good, so freaking cute, and it just really made me really happy, which is something I love in a book. Like, it's always good to break up my sad gay books with like something fun and light and happy. So From Luke Off With Love has a lot to love. <laughs> I really loved the ice skating aspect. I talked about that a lot in the first clip, so I'm not going to go super into that, but I really loved that. This book really just felt like reading fan fiction. Like, it was really easy to get through and really easy to read, but it just made me, like, very, very happy. And it just had some really cute freaking tropes in it that I love. In the second half of the book, there's this whole, like, sick comfort trope that I love. Like, I talked about this when I read The Hating Game. Like, that's my new favorite trope is, like, sick fic. Like, so cute. Like, I love it. <laughs> it's adorable. She, like, gets a cold 
old and our main character is so feisty and so just willing to like fight through anything that even when she gets sick she's like no I can still do it we have to keep going but he's like no like you're crazy stop and he takes care of her and it's just so sweet and it's like the one of my favorite things ever because <laughs> the hero in this book was just so sweet like I just loved him a lot it just is so funny to me I loved the dynamic of the two main characters because they really just are rivals and especially her like she hates him so much she hates his guts but like the more they work together and the more that they spend time with each other the more they realize that they work pretty well as friends and then that they actually like each other more <laughs> I just loved this book a lot I just thought it was so cute and I like mono rated five stars like there was nothing wrong with it in my opinion <laughs> yeah I'm gonna talk about the ending a little bit so there's gonna be a couple spoilers I just wanted to talk about how like at the end when she breaks her ankle I freaked the fuck out I was like this cannot be happening like what is going on I was so scared I was like crying I'm, like what is going on this cannot happen right now because it was at the very end of the book and I was like you cannot seriously like put me through all of this and then they not compete I was like oh my god <laughs> But it was fine. It was all good. I made it through, which was like, thank God. And then at the very end, like right before their big competition, and he's like, they're out on the ice ready to start. And he's like, you know, I think I love you. <laughs> and she's like, what? We're just supposed to start this thing. It was so cute. I loved it so much. And I feel like this also dealt with like a lot of different topics. Like they discussed body positivity, which I thought was pretty cool. And it also dealt a lot with like family issues. Jasmine, our main character, has this really big extended family, but um, her dad isn't really necessarily in the picture a lot. And I thought that storyline with her dad was really interesting, a really good addition to the story. And yeah, I know Amanda talked about this one a little bit being pretty slow burn. And it is slow burn, but... <laughs> It's not in the way that I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like absolutely like no romance or anything until the end. And I guess technically it is, but there's definitely a lot of like cute scenes throughout that really build the relationship. There's definitely a lot of like fluff throughout, which is good, you know? Um, there's not a smutty scene until the very end. And I don't know who taught this woman how to write smut, but <laughs> it was a little uncomfortable to be honest with you. She used some really weird words. <laughs> But that's neither here nor there. It was fine. Anyway, now I forgot what I was saying. But yeah, it wasn't so slow burn that you were just like bored <laughs> until the end. Like I thought it was cute throughout the whole thing. Then the ending like smut scene was that much more important because we had waited so long for it, you know? You know? Okay. So that's how I felt from, about From the Gulf with Love. I really, really liked this one and I think I'm gonna give it five stars. So this is my first five star in this video. Can I get another one out of From Blood and Ash? I don't know. Let's find out. I just got to the halfway point of From Blood Nash, so I'm gonna pop on here and do a quick update. In case you didn't remember, I actually don't think I explained this book very well anyway. This book is basically a romance fantasy book. It follows our main character, Poppy, who is a maiden. She's chosen by the gods to be like this pure person, and she's gonna ascend later and become godlike and immortal and all this stuff. But um, part of the stipulations of that is that obviously, like, most people can't see her face at all. She's very covered up, um, very much like the mirror, supposed to be very protected and sheltered, all that kind of stuff. But in the very beginning, of of this book she sneaks off to this place called the Red Pearl which is like a tavern like a little um risque sort of hangout place and she um starts to kind of hook up with this guy named Hawk who is a guard he actually ends up becoming one of her personal guards and shit happens from there <laughs> There's also this whole storyline with these like magical beings, they're called wolvens, and then there's like vampire-esque people. I'm not really in it for the fantasy elements, so honestly the first half has been a little bit boring because it's been a lot of world building. There was that scene in the beginning with Hawk, but that was such a tease because <laughs> we didn't finish what we started and then we just went on our merry way and Hawk just kind of now started to be in the story again. So I think it's gonna pick up after this halfway point, but the first half was just kind of boring a little bit. It really started off strong and then it just was kind of like, a Okay, let's let's move this along a little bit. I think it's probably important for the story building and the world building and all that stuff, but this wasn't the most fun to read about. But I'm very excited for the second half and I really hope we ramp up that romantic development a little bit. There's starting to be some talk of like the fact that Poppy really doesn't want to take on this maidenhood and become ascended and all of this stuff. She would kind of rather just be a normal person, which understandable. The rulers of this world are obviously kind of corrupt because in what fantasy world are they not? So there's a talk of that as 
well and Poppy's just kind of pretty abused in this position that she's in so um she's not really feeling it and I don't blame her plus Hawk is hot so I can't wait for him to be in it a little bit more right now the first half of this book would probably be like a two and a half or a three star other than the first chapter it was a little boring like I said but I think that it's definitely going to pick up after this halfway point mark and I think I'm going to feel differently about the end hopefully fingers crossed so that's that I will update you when I'm finished or if something else interesting happens don't mind my red face I literally just got out of the shower did my skincare routine so my skin is still like processing that but anyway I wanted to hop on here because I did finally finish from blood and ash I did really really like it I thought it was really good especially that ending oh my god I was like <laughs> It was so good at the end. I think that I'm going to settle on a 4.25 star. I'm, do I'm doing this new writing system this year, so sorry if it's like weird and confusing and too many decimals. So I really liked a lot of it. I really liked the relationship between Hawk and Poppy. I thought Hawk was a really interesting hero. I really liked him a lot throughout and some of the predictions I had about him definitely came true. Wasn't mad that I predicted that. I That's what I wanted to happen, so I'm glad that it happened. Poppy is a really awesome heroine too. Even though she is pretty innocent because she's supposed to be as the maiden. She definitely knows how to take care of herself and is definitely a badass with a dagger and a sword. So um, she definitely has a lot of her own agency and she's very feisty and really makes her own decisions for herself and nobody pressures her into doing anything, which I really appreciated because I always liked me a badass independent woman. And I liked the contrast between who she was supposed to be and who she actually was. And they talked about that a lot throughout how being the maiden wasn't really something that she wanted. I might be kind of spoilery from here on out. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw the war Morning up but um, especially when we find out in the end that Hawk is like the dark one killed the duke infiltrating the castle and he is trying to reclaim his spot on the throne he's actually like a vampire-esque character and even though Poppy was taken hostage and was being controlled and betrayed and everything else she really maintained her agency which I really appreciated I just really liked them together especially when she starts to learn the truth about how she's been kind of brainwashed her entire life and how the other side of the war isn't as bad as she's been led to believe that actually she might be on the worse side of things and I just thought all that was done really well like the way she processed her emotions made a lot of sense just the way that she reacted she was so conflicted I just thought Poppy was a really interesting character um, I thought her magic powers were interesting I just really liked her and Hawk together and I was so relieved when we got to chapter 30 and we like finally got some smut because <laughs> that whole like first part of the book was just pretty dry other than that first chapter not gonna lie and that's why I can't give this book a five star because up until like the last maybe 25% this book was honestly kind of boring I don't know that I would have thought it was as boring if I wasn't trying to read it so quickly but it was kind of long and drawn out and I did not want it to be long and drawn out because I was trying to finish the book so that probably affected my rating a little bit but kind of was in it for the romance and there wasn't quite as much romance as I thought there was going to be so I was a little bit disappointed by that I have a feeling that the next book is going to be a little bit more intense that way so I probably will have to pick up the next book sooner rather than later oh yeah that ending was crazy he was like we're going back to Atlantia to get married <laughs> I was like okay we're going there I'm so I don't know I really liked it a lot. <laughs> So those are my thoughts on From Blood and Ash. I really liked this one. And that is the final book for this vlog. So let's just wrap up my overall thoughts a little bit more. First of all, I think I'm going to kind of rank the books really quick. So I think the fa my favorite book that I read for this experiment was From Luke Off With Love by Marina Zapata. I really liked this book a lot. This was just an easy breezy five stars. It probably won't make it into my favorites of the year. I don't really know what I'm going to read this year, but it wasn't like a new all-time favorite five star, but it definitely was a five star. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? My second favorite was probably Love war even though I rated it about the same as from blood and ash lovely war was just a little bit more my speed and it definitely was something that I would have liked regardless of this challenge I think and would have read regardless and it was emotional and sad like I like them so I think I liked that one just a little bit more and then in third place is obviously from blood and ash all of these top three books were in were like over four stars like in the 4.5 kind of range so I think that was pretty awesome I found three books that I really really enjoyed and then the other two I I did like they were more in the like the two and a half two and a half to three and a half kind of star range I think that this is hard I don't know how to rank these I think that I probably liked Credence a little bit more than I liked the Grace year like if Credence hadn't had that one problematic scene in it I think I would have rated it higher but the Grace year had like quite a few things throughout that I had issues with and I just don't know that it was as well formed overall story as Credence was if I'm comparing them that way so I think Credence takes the number four 
four slot and the race here takes the number five slot although i definitely didn't hate it i still gave it like two and a half three stars i there were definitely elements of it that i did enjoy so i didn't hate any of these books and i definitely think that me and amanda have similar tastes in some aspects there were a couple of things that i found that were in these books across the board so number one amanda really likes a strong female main character with a lot of agency every single book had a badass female main character that was willing to stand up for herself that was feisty when she needed to be who stood up for what she believed in and what she wanted and i also really like that in the book so i think that's one of the reasons why i really liked a lot of these reads i really liked all of the female main characters and i think that's definitely something that amanda and i have in common another common thread throughout these books is that amanda likes her heroes to be like brooding and a little rough around the edges a little dark you know what i mean in two of these books the hero was technically like the villain um in credence caleb was definitely kind of a villainous bully type of character and from lukov ivan he was not a bully character per se it was an enemies to lovers kind of story so he was definitely like playful with her in that kind of same similar way just a little bit a little bit toned back this maybe wasn't super present in lovely war because those two main male characters were just like cinnamon rolls in that book but for the most part all of these books shared that common element of like the dark brooding hero another thing that is very common across the board in these books is female friendship i think manda really values female friendships in her books almost every single one of these books featured a female friendship in some way whether that was between a mom and a daughter and her sisters in from look off with love or in from blood and ash between our main character penelope and her friend honey across the board almost all of these books except for maybe credence featured a really strong female friendship that was really important to the plot just as much so as the romance was and so i also really like that kind of thing and so i was glad that, that was a common thread throughout and obviously the main thread holding all of these together is that they all have heavily featured romance. They were very different genres, dystopian, fantasy, contemporary, historical, but they all really heavily featured an element of romance, which we all know that Manda really, really enjoys. And I can't really say that she particularly likes one romance over the other because these were all very different. Some are really sweet, some are more kind of bully romance, some are very like passionate. <laughs> So I really appreciated the variety that she gave me in this taste test because I feel like I got a lot of different things and I really enjoyed pretty much all of them. Like I said, I definitely think that we have some similar tastes and I really enjoyed reading Amanda's favorites. I feel a lot closer to her now. I feel like I know her a lot better. This experiment is just a lot of fun as always. So yeah, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. All relevant links will be in the description down below, including Amanda's channel. Please go check out Amanda's channel. She's also doing a similar video reading my favorites, so go check that out as well. If you want to see more of me, definitely follow me on Instagram or Twitter and make sure you like and subscribe to this video, hit that bell notification, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!